I am a little bit nervous about the talk, and I'll tell you why. But first of all, thank you for coming. Um, I hope I can meet your expectations of the talk, but if I don't, I'll do another talk next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a highly interactive session. We'll, I'll tell you more about it. So what happened was that I got an email from Radek. We go way back, and he says, um, not enough submissions. Can you do something? And I said, okay, what, what can I do? My team doesn't listen to me anyway. So, so I said, okay, let me send a proposal. I kid you not, 30 seconds, I said, what does it take to make a good manager for open source? Three lines proposal. And I honestly thought there's no way in hell they're going to accept it. <laughs> it got accepted. Okay, but that's fine. I'm up for the challenge. Um, and the other thing that happened is between the proposal that I sent and now, a lot happened in Brno, right? The laptop stuff, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay, it's great. Uh, leadership Council, again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's fine. And Project Collins, all these three things if you don't. So if you are here expecting answers or feedback about that, this is not that talk. I'm not going to, those are landmines I'm going to steer clear of. OK, so what is the objective? So you say, Rashid, OK, those are not what you're going to talk about. What are we going to talk about? So interactively, we will discuss in a nice, friendly group environment. Um, what, uh, giving us, so we will have a very interactive session, but that's what I meant. Uh, giving associates an idea of what does it take to be a manager. A glimpse in the life of a manager. That's one aspect for the associates who are here. And for me to take some feedback and give to the higher-ups, whatever the higher-ups might be, let's say HR BPs, HR business partners and VPs and stuff. I'm fortunate enough that I run into them regularly, so I can give them the feedback of what we discussed here. And then also Agile, if you are fully into the Agile boat, double thumbs up. If you are partially in the Agile boat, one thumb up. And if you are thinking that Agile is a mumbo jumbo that you want to stay clear of, welcome. Equal opportunity, welcome to all. So when you are thinking about the answers and having the discussions about it, <clears throat> this is not, uh, the, your answers should not be dependent on Agile, Agile-ish, or no Agile. And I'll tell you more about it. OK, you need to take out your cell phones. And I hope the Wi-Fi stays and it works out and all of that stuff because this is a Kahoot's interactive kind of a thing. Please scan this QR code. I will leave the QR code on the side from here on. This is a, oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, so that it stays on for the people who might join later. So I'll leave, it's the same QR code. I hope your computers don't. So people are logging in, there are 26, 28 out of 200. I had to up it from 50 to 200 yesterday. I hope Red Hat come, please. Okay, so we'll continue. So it's gonna be a lot of interactive sessions. I said some questions are yes, no questions, some questions are slider questions, some other questions, and then we go from there. So people are logging in. It's up to you if you want to put your name, the real name, something else. It does detect profanity, so please try to uh, not crash the system by anonymous is fine, something else is fine. It's all good. 33, that's good. So in the interest of time, let me continue because, okay. So let's start with a warm-up question. Are you a Red Hatter? And uh, this is just a warm-up question. Are you a Red Hatter? Just to get people acclimatized with the thing. Yes, no. OK. I think we have given enough, given enough time. Oh, thought it shows results. Hmm, there's something going on. Uh, start. 
that is not accurate. Hmm. Power of interactiveness. Thought it would show the results. Okay, so I apologize for that. I thought. Okay, I thought it would show the results, but that's okay. So we have we have plenty of red hatters in here, and uh, yeah, so that's good. <laughs> so moving along, moving along, technical difficulties. I hope uh, I hope this was the last technical difficulty. Okay, so the next series of questions are. Uh, it was hard to find the right words to make the questions crystal clear. And as I go along, uh, if you are confused about the wording, if you are confused about what the motivation behind the question is, please let me explain. So, or ask, like it's interactive. So raise your hand and say, what do you mean by open source? What do you mean by manager? What do you mean by HR or whatever it might be? So let me explain uh, and give me a chance to explain if you have questions. Okay, so when, and the other one is when you think about the answers, I want you to, Imagine an ideal manager from your past, right? Think about a manager that was just phenomenal. Uh, some, a familiar name that I might give to some people is like Denise. I was a direct report to her. She was a fantastic manager, loved her. Tim Burke, loved her. Other people from my previous past, loved them. Um, so the other, so that's one way to look at it as an ideal manager from the past. Or another way to look at it is if you wake up tomorrow morning and you have an ideal manager, what would it look like? And especially for the open source environment. And um, the third way to look at it is for the future, successful future of open source, successful future of Red Hat, what would an actual, what, what would an excellent manager look like? So that will frame the answers when you give them. Okay. So how important is it for the manager to be technically proficient? Uh, this is a scaled question and your answers are very valuable, so feel free to answer. Uh, so on one side, it is need to be technically proficient. On the other side, or oh, no need to be technically proficient. The other one is must be technically proficient. So let's see, 29, 30, 38, hmm, a mixed bag, mixed bag, that's good. That's good, mix is good. But that also means that some people are expecting him to be technically proficient, the other ones are not which is good, it's all good. Okay, next question. How important is it for the manager to know about upstream development? And when I say no upstream development, I mean like, okay, who's the maintainer? How do the patches work? What's the review process? Uh, what do the comments mean? How to, how to present the patches upstream? How to wait for it when it will be back, etc. So. Nice, nice. And by the way, if you are impressed by the networking aspect of it, meaning you are able to press a button, it goes to some California server and comes back, that's all our team. So you're welcome. So the, uh, I manage the networking team, so that was a shameless plug about the networking. But yes, it is pretty impressive that we are living in a day and age where you can just click it and it goes to California and comes back latency zero latency. Okay, so far no questions, that's good. So we are now going to go into the fuzzy questions a little bit. How important is it for the manager to grow, nurture, grow and nurture an upstream community? So this is a little different from the previous question. This is now saying the manager should not only know about the upstream community, but also grow and nurture it. So in the, in the area that the manager is in, so let's say networking, storage, uh, ups, um, OpenShift, OpenStack, installer, whatever, if it is, if they are involved in the, if there is an upstream aspect to it, how important it is for the manager to grow and nurture the upstream community. And it seems like it's leaning towards it. That line is the average line, so it shows the average. So some people are thinking high, some people are thinking medium, so that's good. And the scale is a little bit off, it's like one through 11. The re oh, one second. The scale is one through 11 uh, because somebody gave me feedback that uh, it, the slider starts in the middle, it should start in the middle, so I had to pick an odd number. 
Otherwise, it was like starting at six. Yes, sir. Uh, good question. I think, oh, repeat the question. The question is, to, should they personally nurture and grow the community or should they ask their team to nurture and grow? I think um, they ask their team. Because in my opinion, it, if the manager does it themselves, that's fine. But the manager should be delegating this kind of stuff also to others to grow as a manager and do many things and not become a bottleneck. So good question. Thanks, Brendan. OK, are we good? 43 answers so far, 34. Are people still thinking about the answers? Please feel free to tell me to slow down if I'm going too fast. OK, next question. How important is it for the manager to know testing and test automation? So not important at all. Let the code go uh, untested versus, no, no, what do you mean? You got to test the damn thing. I mean. Good thing, not damn thing. <laughs> being very, being at least talking to the QE counterparts, spending time with them, understanding what, how much the code coverage is, uh, how much is it automated, how much is manual, whatever is manual can be automated, what is the infrastructure that they use, how they do the testing. Yeah, all of the above. Yes, it's a lot to cover, but all of the above. Cool, cool. Again, mix, mix results. OK, next question. How important is upstream innovation versus backporting? Because a lot of development managers, at least in Red Hat, have to balance that. Because I was giving up another different presentation. Uh, innovation secures the future. Backporting secures the paychecks, at least for the Red Hatters. So we have to balance both. But in your opinion, how much do they have to focus on upstream innovation and how much is backporting? Yes, please. Yes. It is sort of chicken and egg. Yes, that is also a thing. But uh, it can be serial as well, meaning I only do backporting. Upstream can do whatever they want. When its upstream release is done, we will just do backporting. So that's another way to look at it, right? So some managers are like, look, I, I don't want to know upstream. They have their own minds. They're not nice people to work with, so I only do backporting. And there are some other people who are like, oh, no. Uh, upstream is what second class citizens do. We are, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I take that back. Backporting is what second class citizens do. I am an upstream diva, so I only do upstream. Sorry if you, somebody thinks that they are upstream. <laughs> I didn't mean to use the word diva. No, I did. OK. So you know, if there's a middle answer, if it's five, the average is 5.1, that tells me that, that, that upstream innovation is also important and backporting is also important for the manager. So they have to do both. Am I reading this correctly? OK. So there's a pattern here. I hope that you are recognizing the pattern along with me. OK, now another yes or no. It's not a yes or no. It's a balancing question. People management versus technical management. As I mentioned in the past, in the first slide, it doesn't, the answer is doesn't have to be agile related. It's OK if you are thinking in agile context, non-agile context, middle context. It's fine. But as a manager, how important is it to be technically proficient? or technical management versus people management. People management is what in Red Hat, like all the workday stuff and promotions and bonuses on all uh, HR related stuff. And technical is, OK, technical direction. I got to make sure that uh, everybody is technically sound and Red Hat products, et cetera. So OK, so it seems like the audience is leaning more towards the people management aspect of it. Cool. I have to change my careers. <laughs> okay, how important it is for the manager to be a good listener? So some, in, during COVID, many of the managers became therapists without training because the world was collapsing, there was zombie apocalypse, um, people were calling in one-on-ones and dumping it on their managers. 
And um, there was the manage the lucky managers had other managers that they could dump on, but the unlucky ones just became a sponge, and it became very very tough also. But that was COVID. But dear, since COVID also, if the dog throws up and people complain to their manager, <laughs> if the bonus is not good, etc. But it's not about the problems also, but about listening and being being present and picking up on signs and. And if somebody was used to talk a lot and stopped talking, trying to figure out what happened, why are you not talking that much? I spent two days with my team and somebody who used to talk a lot didn't say a single word. And I'm really concerned and I should talk to that person and what happened. So that's all part of listening and understanding and absorbing in my opinion. So it's extremely important according to uh, the general consensus, as you can say 10 out of 11, which is fantastic, so important to be a good listener. And if I look back in my life, uh, the good managers were very, very good listeners. So this is in line with what I expected. This is good. Okay, what do I mean by a filter? There's a lot that goes on around us, right? So does a good manager should filter out only the essentials? Uh, somebody said, what if the manager filters out everything? Well, that's not a good filter because that's called a blockage. Right, that's called a blocker. So filter means just like in the electrical engineering sense or communication sense, the signal to noise ratio, take the noise out, have the signal go in, or the bare essentials. Um, there's so much going on in every corporation and upstream. What are the basic essentials? And what do you think that is? Is it a manager's job to filter out the quote unquote noise or not? And the survey says it's only tell me the essentials. So people are leaning towards just tell me the essentials and keep the rest. So it's important to be a filter. Okay, we are winding down the questions. So in your lifetime, oh, this is a this is now a, not a scale question. I got inspired by it by all the HR, not HR, all the AI talks this morning, or. In your lifetime, do you think AI will be able to replace the jobs of open source managers? So please punch in your answers. This should show it on the screens as well. Yes. OK. Somebody really believes in not the good ones. That's a good one. Hell no. Nah. I hope not. Never. OK. Cool. So no seems to be the. Word cloud is sticking to the no. No, nope, maybe, nah, that's another one. So a lot of people, a lot of you are think it's no. Phew, my job is secure. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I will be replaced. But believe it or not, I had this discussion, not an argument, with someone who actually believes that um, managers will be replaced by Open the back door. What's it called? Open the door, pal. Open the some bay door. Huh? What's that line from uh, Space Odyssey? Open the pod bay door, pal. That's the one. Pod bay door. That's what I was missing. Open the pod bay door. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you are young and I'm old. <laughs> or two of us are old. What are the most? Okay. Now again, open open question. Word cloud, multiple, ans multiple answers allowed, multiple times allowed. Um, in your opinion, apart from all those questions that I asked about filter, listener, technical, tell me more. What are the most important characteristics of a good manager? How are we doing on time? We're good? 11 minutes, right? 15 minutes. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's very good. Nice, friendly. Trust, helpful. Some of it we discussed already. Growth mindset for the team, yes, very important. Empathy, part of listening and filtering maybe. Supportive, empathetic. So there's a whole empathy theme on the left, which is great. Communicator, understanding, helpful. Some of you are thinking about the answers, which is great. Awesomeness. 
thinks out of the box, leader, positive thinking. I was concerned about the Wi-Fi, to be honest, because that would have ruined my whole thing. But so far, Wi-Fi seems to be... <laughs> it's, it's... Oh, nice. So, I think the central, the, 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 uh, the bigger font words were multiple people said that. So, I think empathy, friendly, understanding, trust was mentioned by many people. So that's good. Empathy. Okay. So out of this word cloud, it seems like empathy, collaboration, listening, trust is, is staying friendly, supportive. But what's curious also is, let's discuss what's not on this word cloud. Humility, yes, that's something very important. High rec, high, I, high EQ. <laughs> Maybe they meant IQ? Oh, emotional quotient. Okay, the person who said high EQ, is that a typo or can somebody? Okay. Are there any surprises in this? Somebody like, oh, I didn't expect that. God decision maker. That's you, Rashi. <laughs> Love you too, man. <laughs> no, believe it or not, uh, I've, I learned it. I learned it. I learned this also recently. We hired some, uh, on purpose, we hired some college grads and we were telling them, oh, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, so go figure it out, talk to people, etc. cetera. And um, the productivity wasn't there. And when we looked into it, we figured out that, okay, not everybody wants to navigate through this ocean of responsibility discussion. Some people are, want a recipe, do this, and then after you're done, do this. And, uh, so, uh, in that open source, collaborative, phenomenal Red Hat environment, I was mistaken where I thought everybody wants to have choices and then decide on their choices because I wanted to operate that way. But I learned recently that there are people who would like to be told what to do. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. God decision maker, sponsor, supporting. Okay, cool. Awesomeness. So we got a lot of responses, which is good. Let's celebrate. Confetti. Cool. <laughs> hey, if I paid for a feature, I'm going to use it. <laughs> OK, cool. Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> we were joking. It's why some of the people are uh, in, in one of the feedback sessions yesterday, somebody put in, nominate Rashid for a Nobel Prize also. But the thing is, it's not always a good thing because let's say Elon Musk was nominated for a Nobel Prize and Trump has been nominated for a Nobel Prize. So I don't know if I should feel... <laughs> okay, let's... So here's the... Now we are getting to the conclusion part of this thing. Uh, on the left, as you can imagine, 10 pounds in a five pound bag. Uh, these are AI generated, so manager has to do all of that. So for the non-managers, I took you through the series to make you understand that there is a lot that is being asked of the managers. And for the managers in the room, you realize that there is a lot expected from managers as well. So I did that on purpose. The questions were, uh, I have been thinking about the questions for months, believe it or not. And, um, and there's, we'll, we'll tell you more about it. There's way too much going on. Okay, so now let's move to another second part of this thing. Without, I mean, with human intelligence, with human intelligence, thank you very much, appreciate it. With human intelligence, we have a table. There's a test, my trusted colleague sitting right there has been helping me with this. And 
he has been waiting as your responses were coming in based on human intelligence no ai was harmed in making this <laughs> making this presentation which i just clumped like technical proficiency upstream development nurture upstream my trusted colleague chris van hoof sitting right there has been plugging in all those numbers and as you saw i updated it live so the if it was all 100 that means 40 40 hours a week 100 assumed 40 hours a week it this came out as 270 so that means that weekends nights all of that stuff so at, at least two the managers right now with all your input needs two and a half the job has to be split on two and uh, two and a half people uh, so there are two things that happens right so we all are human we have families we have dogs to walk we have to take care of other things as well and um, then some things give right some things give at some some managers they say okay fine i have tech leads and architects who take care of the technical side and that's a good thing in my opinion and sometimes this like okay no i'm only technical and then they are not promoting people and they are not working on their careers and stuff um, in the past uh, there was a person i i didn't i i was unfortunate to have a manager who i never had a one on one with like i would just get an email your bonus this quarter is this no explanation no nothing no feedback take it <laughs> yeah so and it happened quarter over quarter so because that person was very much focused on the technical side they would read every single comment on every single bugzilla in the team that the, every single bugzilla so that was that person's style uh, but something gives so coming back to this when we weighed all of this out it's 270 100 would have meant 40 hours so it's a tough job so next time you talk to your manager be sympathetic <laughs> tell them hey i appreciate you or not uh, <laughs> start with the appreciate part and then you can tell them but we the managers are trying to manage all of that be filters so there are good managers and some people are not as good and they are struggling when they are struggling please give them feedback again okay with that said tell me more please let's discuss questions feedback what uh, what did i miss in this did i miss anything did i not discuss or bring up something that you would like me to discuss or bring up yes sir The answer is unfortunately no. The good. Oh, the repeat the question. The question is, does is a. Let me make sure I understand it. If tell me if I don't. Are the good managers able to normalize it to a hundred? Like they find a way to be at a hundred. Unfortunately, the answer is no. The reason is good managers are honestly doing double duty. They are doing double duty. So they do the one on ones during weekdays, and then they do go on nights and weekends and take care of the technical side. And they do go and take care of the upstream side, and they do go take care. They even get yelled at by their own manager, saying, "Hey, how come this is not done, or why is it lacking?" Right? So, the good managers are honest to goodness, trying to juggle the picture from the past. I mean, the previous slide, and they're trying to juggle and doing double duty. So they have two arms coming out of that. And we should appreciate it. Seriously, we should appreciate it. Um, I'm not saying that every manager should do that, but the demands of the job. Uh, re sometimes require it, and it's ebbs and flows. It's ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's really a lot. If you have to do quarterly connections, it becomes crazy. Then you add the bonus, and you add the RSUs, and you add all of that. Plus agileification. Plus uh, Neil calling you saying, "How come you're late on agileification?" So <laughs> he's my good friend. We go way back. So it, it sometimes it adds up. It piles up. Honest to goodness, it piles up. But other times it's like, oh, my inbox is empty. And I think I have it under control. So it's ebbs and flows. I'm not saying it's constant, but it ebbs and flows. But to answer your question, no, it's not 100. If, if it is 100, then either it's a small team or it's a pass through. 
Sometimes some managers, as I said, they, they just do a pass through. Whatever is coming from left or right, they just pass it to their team members and let them be mature enough to deal with it. Long answer to your short question because I think it was a deep question. Did I answer it? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. John. Yes. Sure, <laughs> sure, I will, yes. The thing is that, yes, I, I, I have worked with managers, uh, now managers need to deal with DevOps manually, DevOps is just like right for fixing up you. Well, okay, the question if I understand it is like, okay, what, what are the characters of a good developer or a non, or team member? Oh, how can the developers, right. Okay, that's a good, that's again a deep question. I hope I can cover the answers is five minutes left. So um, the most important thing is that if we, it's okay for a developer or a team member to say no. It's okay for a developer or a team member to say yes. The worst thing is when they say yes and don't do it. I'm not joking, that's serious. That makes the manager's life very difficult. You say, can you please help me with water filtration plant? We have a problem in sub-Saharan Africa. We would like to help them with water filtration. Plan. One developer can say, no boss, I'm seriously overwhelmed, not going to do it, not my interest, noble cause, not going to do it. Great. That manager will work with someone else. Another person says, yes, yes, let's do it. Got to do it. And they both. The worst is when they say, yes, I'll do it and not do it. That, if we can work on avoiding that, that will make the manager's life so much easier. Because then there's no follow-up, you just say, okay, first John Smith, I know I gave it to John to create this water filtration plan, I know it will be done. And I know that he will ask me questions or if he's stuck or whatever, he will ask me, that's fine. The worst is when you're assuming it will be done and it's not done. Something to think about. Do others, other managers in the room feel that way? Yes, sir. Yes, very good point. The other one is like they were they they meant they said yes they want to do it but they are blocked and they don't involve it and don't tell it until it's very late. So that's another part. Thank you, Chris. Two minutes left. One super good question. Yes, I knew it. <laughs> Sorry, could you? I didn't understand. Ah. Right. Very good point. So Brendan's point is that some of these are leadership characteristics and the others are <laughs> not so much. If you could divide it or compartmentalize it, that might make the life of the manager a little easier. Yeah? Did I catch you? Yes. Delegation is very important. Yes, absolutely. Another thing that happens is, uh, unfortunately, that many of the managers in Red Hat rose through the ranks of individual contributors, and they're used to doing things right because they were given more uh, responsibility, and it's hard for them to let go, right? If I tell my son, can you please get me a screwdriver? He will say, which screwdriver? Where is it? Which one? Why do you need it? Can I do it later? might as well I go to the basement and get the screwdriver, right? So not to pick on my son, uh, but he's, he's wonderful. I honestly mean it. But just giving you examples. So if a lot of managers find it difficult to delegate because the amount of time they invest in explaining it, might as well do it myself, which is a problem. Mike McGrath says it very well. He says, anytime you don't delegate, you are robbing someone of an opportunity to learn. When I heard him say it, I said, that's a very good point. I got to delegate more. So yes, delegation is very, very important. That's how we can help normalize it or bring it back to 100. But the challenge is that, that sometimes, the, I mean, then the manager has to build the team and grow those people who they can rely on. And yes, it can be done. I've seen it successfully done. Thank you so much. OK, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate your interactiveness. <laughs>